Okay, I believe we can start. Um, good afternoon and welcome everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining us today at this third in a row online consultative meeting on illicit financial flows in the Western Balkans. My name is Vanya Petrovic. I'm a program manager for the Southeastern Europe Observatory of the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime. Um, these meetings are part of consultations uh, that we are conducting with civil society, media, and academic community uh, within our project on combating illicit financial flows in the Western Balkans, which is generally supported by the German Development Corporation, GIZ. Um, I will leave uh, to our project coordinator, uh, Anessa Agovic, to tell you more about the project in a moment. Uh, but before, uh, before we start, um, I would just like to highlight a few um, housekeeping things. Uh, this webinar has a, a translation uh, from English to um, uh, local languages, so please, uh, under interpretation, um, icon, you can choose your preferred uh, language. Also, uh, this uh, webinar is uh, uh, recorded and it, it is being live streamed uh, on YouTube. Um, before we officially start uh, with, with the agenda, I would just like to also introduce and give floor to our director, director of our observatory, Ms. Fatiana Medini, to say a few words. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Vanya. So hi, everyone. Um, I just really want to, to thank you for participating in today's uh, webinar, where uh, we are going to present uh, efforts to create a useful uh, toolkit that will help the civil society, journalists and academics to have a better understanding of illicit financial flows in this region. Uh, since the tool is aiming to serve you, today's consultations are very important, and we are really looking forward to hear uh, your feedback on how to improve uh, this tool, uh, toolkit even more. Uh, since I'm seeing online some new names, I am also going to take the, the, the opportunity and tell you a little bit more about our Observatory of Illicit Economies in Southeastern Europe. So this observatory, as you know, is part of the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime, and it was established in 2018 with the support of the UK government as part of the Berlin process. Uh, so we are now present in this region for uh, five years. Uh, the key function of this observatory are research and analysis. So what we do is uh, we publish regional research report on, our, on organized crime and corruption, but also risk bulletins and digital tools like uh, this one that we are aiming to develop uh, right now. On the other hand, we discuss and debate with all the relevant actors, including the governments in the region, pushing so for our research to turn into, to turn into policy. Uh, last but not least, we, uh, from time to time, support also civil society organizations in the region with grants to build resilience against organized crime and corruption. Uh, on the other hand, something that I wanted to share with you is, uh, is the fact that our observatory has a network uh, comprised of uh, 40 experts, uh, which are uh, distinguished uh, members of civil society, journalists and academics from the Western Balkan countries, but also from the region neighboring countries. Since this audience today is comprised mainly of academics, so maybe who knows in the future, you might also be part of our network of experts. So you can learn more uh, about us in our website and also follow us on social media accounts. Uh, now, without further ado, I want to hand over to my colleague, Anessa. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Fatiana and Vanya as well. Uh, I will use the opportunity to thank you for your time, uh, dear academic uh, community from the Western Balkans. It is a pleasure to have your time, but also we will try to present on our actual uh, and current project. And also we will, besides this presentation, we are really keen on hearing your feedback, which is very valuable for us. Uh, as Previously mentioned, uh, we, with the support of the GIZ, we are conducting this project called Combating Illicit Financial Flows in the Western Balkans. And although the illicit financial flows are not something new in this region, uh, we have been conducting previously research to demonstrate on the dam damaging impact of the IFFs in the region. 
how much the IFFs actually uh, hamper this economic development in the region. Uh, we will share with you uh, in the following stage, but I will uh, also use this opportunity to uh, present that uh, besides myself in this presentation, there is our valuable GI consultant uh, and the regional expert on the IFFs, Dr. Ivica Simonovsky, who will follow up with me on this presentation. And our uh, colleague, Dardan Kochani, field coordinator for Kosovo, he will be moderating this uh, session. And you can also ask questions or anything in the chat, just to accent that part. Uh, to continue with the presenting on our work, uh, previously we have published a couple of reports, actually uh, two reports on the Western Balkan countries, where we have uh, tried to summarize and actually present on how IFFs are widespread in this region. Uh, until now, there was also limited uh, understanding and also I have to note awareness of the IFFs across our region, uh, but also among the stakeholders group, which is actually, which actually should be uh, concerning. There is, besides uh, not enough uh, awareness, but also little data on the IFFs across the Western Balkans. That is why we think and actually believe, and we are trying to contribute in that sense with this following toolkit and our work in general on the IFFs. As you can see, these two reports were picturing the damaging effect on the IFFs, but also in these two reports, uh, which we are updating with the data in our uh, current research, you can find uh, forms of transferring and uh, trying uh, and attempts of legalizing uh, illicit money to illicit uh, and also which methods are being used to uh, that are we have to say moving up with the trends and increasingly being uh, sophisticated. Please next slide. Um, sorry, sorry to intervene, Anessa, but uh, I think we have an issue. We could not see the presentation. We could oh, not Claudio, could you share it? Yeah, okay. now we can okay. see it. Thank you. Something happened with the sharing. Sorry. As I said, next slide. Here is uh, just in short uh, information on the uh, our uh, previously published reports. Please, Omedina, do share links on our previously uh, shared reports so participants can have a chance to click on it. Thank you. Uh, following the next slide, here is an overview of our uh, before slide. Thank you, Claudia. Uh, on this slide, here is a presented our overview of the project activities that is supported by the GIZ and actually the opportunity of today's meeting. As you can see, the idea is uh, through complementary activities in, in the end, have an online toolkit that will be of the use, not only to civil society and the media, but also academia for the further research. Uh, within our uh, previous actions, we have worked on the developing of the toolkit methodology and the outline that was served for the creation of the national uh, baseline assessments, which are presenting uh, country profiles. Within the activity of the organizing consultative meetings, the idea was to hear feedback from the different stakeholders. And previously we had a consultative meeting with the civil society and the media and our valuable as well uh, regional network, which uh, is today is a following meeting with the academia. The idea is to hear different feedback, but also to hear uh, what is important for different target groups. Uh, following these activities, we are having a meeting in the person in person meeting in as a part of our sharing uh, opinions, but also learning from your feedback and actually using the feedback of our audience from consultative meeting to adjust, but also uh, take into consideration uh, different approaches in addressing the necessary uh, uh, research, but also updating the information on the IFFs. Uh, through this time, where we have already worked on our research and still updating information uh, that we previously presented in our reports, we are also working on the development of the toolkit. The idea of this toolkit actually is to be user-friendly, to have all in one place information in English for all Western Balkan countries, where you can on just with one click, just visit one of the country profiles and have listed all information listed according to immediate outcomes. 
Uh, the idea besides having it online on, of course, the sub website, of our main website of Global Initiative is to provide this tool for researchers, civil society, activists or academians to check on uh, also what information are there, but also to provide maybe in further research or conducting initiatives on the monitoring of the countries on addressing the IFS. Uh, the last step that will be followed by the end of this year in, uh, is to launch this webinar where we will have a specific event and to present this toolkit and of course show it for the for their use. Uh, next slide. As you can see, the idea of this, I have to say, engagement of a sec di different stakeholders in the Western Balkan is also to provide uh, the, to provide effective implementation, not only of the project, but addressing IFFs. If we want uh, to provide, uh, if, you, if you want to access necessary information, you have, it, you have to have it as at least that is our opinion in user-friendly way, but also uh, the, the one of the goals of the GI, especially our Southeastern Eastern Europe uh, Observatory is to not only raise awareness on the IFFs, but also to enlarge a strategy for sus uh, sustainability in addressing, but also combating IFFs in the future. We see uh, IFFs as one of the key topics and interest in our organization, and we will also expand this interest beyond this grant. Uh, this toolkit itself is not only important as a part of uh, reaching the project goal, but is is, is to provide sustainability uh, in order to provide uh, for different stakeholders a place to research, to gather information and to monitor within the countries uh, the implementation of certain strategies or action plans on addressing IFFs. Next slide. As I said, uh, we present IFFs as one of the key topics, and we believe that it is important to not only raise awareness, but also to pro provide this key toolkit for the further uh, research and also addressing this uh, topic in the region. Uh, and that is one of the key, actually, ideas in our observatory. Uh, following my next slide, actually, we are. Uh, I'm giving word to Ivica to present on what will be the content of the toolkit, and later on, I will try to picture you how the toolkit should look like when it's, of course, resolved in this stack way. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Anessa. Great introduction and uh, greetings from Skopje, from North Macedonia. For those who are from uh, registered from North Macedonia, greetings and happy holiday. So my part is uh, uh, expert part, and I will try to give you some approach and some much more information about the concept of illicit financial flow and how the Western Balkan countries actually understand the terms illicit financial flow. If you uh, listen carefully, Anessa in the beginning mentioned that there is no unique approach and that there is no unique definition of the terms of illicit financial flow. And this different approach of international community in terms of de defining illicit financial flows opens a polemic that should be in subject for further discussion to clarify what this means by the illicit financial flow. So the lack of um, an accepted formal definition is not just an academic concern, and this uh, conceptual confusion is a critical weakness in the research and analysis, in the, in also in the creation of policy and programs to respond to problems and to re um, um, reduce the illicit financial flows. As you can see from the, this figure, uh, in general, the West Balkan countries do not distance uh, themselves from the UN approach. This is how the UN approach and is the, in, in other words, it's very similar uh, with the, our uh, regions, how we actually as a West Balkan countries understand illicit financial flow. In the region of uh, West Balkans, illicit financial flow are interpreted as a cross-border transfer of funds, such as proceeds of criminal activity. Uh, legal money that uh, is being shipped on to the West uh, Balkan financial system for the purposes of tax evasion 
legal money uh, and illegal money uh, or cash transfer outside from the country to finance terrorist activities for terrorist fighters, violent extremism or some radical groups and transfer to and from entities listed to designate or designated by international organizations such as UN, EU or some national sanction list. As I, um, uh, because I mentioned that um, this term illicit financial flow always in definition of these terms makes a uh, uh, confusion because it's cover only cross border transfers and uh, following our approach in the regions, these border transfers of funds can be realized in various ways. And the first uh, channel of illicit financial flow is cash. And the cash is a very common use technique to move the money from one uh, to another place. Transfer through official financial uh, system. It's uh, here, it's a bank system and fast money transfer service providers. Uh, other channel is through an informal transfer system. Uh, we call this system Hawala this, because this is no official transfer of funds, but uh, the people use for uh, very quickly to move the money from one to other place. And the last but not the least is uh, this is very important to understand transaction of virtual assets, which some uh, countries is, uh, is still not regulated because uh, FTF uh, in his glossary defined crypto transaction as an international transaction. So that means uh, because also there is no unique uh, formula how to quantify the volume of illicit financial flow, all of these uh, things makes a lot of confusion uh, for professionals, for researchers, how to quantify the volume of illicit financial flow that came or uh, uh, came out from the official financial system or from the camps. Next slide. One of the techniques uh, that criminal use is money laundering process. The money laundering takes place in three main stage, stages. As you can see from the slide, the first place, uh, the first stage, uh, the first stage of money laundering is uh, and here the criminals try uh, uh, to put the money on, into the financial system. And on the second stage is a stage of wiring. And this stage, uh, uh, actually, uh, is financial flow are realized in the lying phase and move the money and move the, 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 the place from one to another. Uh, for the other side, the Financial Action Task, task Forces recognize misinvoicing as a, one of the three principal methods of moving well without physical moving money and one of the primary channels for illicit financial flows. While there are multiple ways, ways to abuse uh, trade transactions and their financing, and the core gamut is the same, to deliberate falsification of the value, volume or type of the commodity in international commercial transactions of goods or services. And uh, the main order is to manipulate the value for custom purposes. Let's go on the next slide. On this slide, you can see some of the enablers of illicit financial flow. And these enablers were uh, identified during the BOAT researchers in 2019 and 2000. Uh, 20 during the uh, uh, research for IFF in the West Balkan countries. The effectiveness of the competent institutions in charge of reducing illicit uh, financial flow has also a direct impact of the increase of illicit financial flows. The currently, uh, this uh, certainly um, uh, causes economic consequences because most of the money will be poured uh, into the other jurisdictions. And from the other hand, we have also uh, political consequences because the concept based on the rule of law will be disrupted. And um, the same time, the system for preventing money laundering and financing of terrorism will be not effective. In such conditions, uh, there is a possibility for uh, all countries um, to be designated on a gray or a black list published uh, by international organizations, such as FATA, for example. And uh, that will be lead to a situation of cascading effect on the country and total house. Because um, in the previous period, we uh, we have some uh, we had some countries that uh, were designated uh, of the this gray in the list, but some of them uh, show the effectiveness and they are uh, moved from this list. Let's go on the next slide.
Uh, one of the as I mentioned on the beginning of the slide, the Federation of Action Task Forces is uh, international governmental organizations. It's set up by G7 group in 1989. And this intergovernmental organization is uh, the main goal is to develop policy and to promote policy also that can uh, combat global money laundering and measures to tackle financing of terrorism. This organization um, uh, set up 40 recommendations and periodically they are revised because this uh, uh, topic is very uh, broad and the, any new things must be uh, measured and developed. Uh, and also this uh, FATF, FATF organization um, established and set up immediate outcomes that measure and assess the effectiveness of the country in combating money laundering and counterfinancing of terrorism. So if uh, during the assess pro assessment process, if some of the states are not uh, compliant with this recommendation and standards, um, and doesn't show effectiveness in uh, combating uh, money laundering and financing of terrorism process, uh, uh, process they will be designated on the gray or a black list. Next slide. If you want to uh, read much more about these 40 recommendations and immediate outcomes, you can visit the FITF website and follow and find these uh, both documents. The first on the left side is 40 recommendations that explain uh, a recommendation by recommendation. And from the right side, it's immediate, uh, uh, 11 immediate outcomes, and the countries are um, assessed based on this uh, recommendation and immediate outcomes. This was the basis for, uh, as Anesha mentioned, for our research, uh, because we, uh, as a GI, um, conducting the research currently for illicit financial flow for uh, West Balkan countries. And any, uh, each of us uh, as researchers should be um, draft the report based on these uh, 11 immediate outcomes that we, we are trying to show uh, our effectiveness in the reducing illicit financial flows and to show um, how the state cooperate to, uh, together with the and build the public private partnership together with the NGO sector, academia, uh, media, et cetera, et cetera, because these stakeholders are very really important in the uh, great, uh, together combat uh, of the laundry and financing. Next slide. As I mentioned, the team of national researchers uh, is conducting um, uh, research on illicit financial flow for their jurisdiction, and the research is based on this Im immediate outcomes. So the first uh, immediate outcomes, uh, this section will look how the, actually the country uh, understand the risk and impact of illicit financial flow and how uh, they assess this threat in, um, uh, on the national level and how the on, on, and also uh, to the region. The second immediate outcomes uh, is for international cooperation. In this section, we are trying to provide information about the joint regional and international initiatives that deal with the topics related to illicit financial flow and to provide information about the, some um, projects, donors who support uh, uh, some NGOs, investigation journalists, academia, or maybe government governmental institutions for um, uh, tackling money laundering and financing of terrorism. The third is uh, immediate outcomes is um, supervision. In this section, we'll also map the types of the legal person that hold gatekeeper position and they are vulnerable to money laundering in each economy and rise the, the, in the mutual evolution report and national risk assessment because supervisory authorities are very important to monitor the financial sector and not financial sector because they are on the first wall that should be identify any unusual or suspicious transactions that are related to illicit financial flow. The, la the next Immediate outcomes uh, is uh, for preventive measures. In, this, in these sections, the toolkit will provide an overview of the analysis of available legislation to prevent 
illicit financial flow on the national level. And uh, on these immediate outcomes, we'll provide information how the state uh, and the countries are complying with international standards. The next one is for uh, lay operation and arrangement. In this section, uh, we'll try to provide information about the private sector, which uh, subsector within the private sector are, more, are most vulnerable for illicit financial flow and how the criminals abuse or use uh, private companies to hide the illicit uh, flows. Next slide. In the next immediate outcomes is for financial intelligence. In this section, we'll look how um, uh, and how in the risk and impact of this financial flow and assess the each country in the across the regions. So it is uh, financial intelligence is very important for uh, law enforcement institutions because financial intelligence provides inf uh, get information from the public, private sector. And this information uh, then uh, open uh, investigation or uh, provide analysis further and um, submit to the law enforcement institution to continue with investigation. The next IO uh, is IO7. Uh, it's uh, related to money laundering investigation and prosecution. In this section, we will look at joint regional and international in initiatives to deal with the topics of uh, illicit financial flow. The next IO is for confiscation. In this uh, uh, topic, we try to provide information how, about the volume uh, of the confiscation, confiscated assets, and how much uh, and, uh, assets are uh, recovered from the other countries. And the last one is uh, related to terrorist financing, uh, preventive measures, and financial sanction, and also how the MPO sector is used or abused for. Uh, purposes of illicit financial flows. Next slide. I mean, it's, yeah, Vanessa. Thank you, Ivica. As you can see here, you, here is just an image how you will be having listed uh, the Western Balkan countries when you open this uh, future sub website on our main website uh, you will be uh, able to click on the countries and when you click on one specific country next slide please you will have an opportunity to have these like subcategories where you can click this specific country profile for example bosnia and herzegovina you will you can click then following on the general information of the country uh, and following, then you can also click on the context and risk. So, for example, in that sense, political context, economic context, in informal and illicit con economies, and so on. Uh, next slide. Here, we just made this image. So, you can see when you click on specific countries, so, for example, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, you can click on where having one place on the general information of the country. Besides that, you have this risk and context, and below you have this list of subcategories, so according to the IOs, where you can have updated information that are based on our previous reports, but the new with the new information. So it should be uh, user-friendly, all in one place, uh, of course, in English, information that are verified, and uh, you just have very listed and in a simple way uh, all these information for all the Western Balkan countries. So this is just the picture you how it would look like this future online toolkit. Uh, and thank you for your time first. Uh, and secondly, now you have the floor for the questions, of course. We tried, the idea was to have a very user-friendly uh, approach for a complex uh, topic. So. If you have any informa uh, information, suggestion, or comments, here is the opportunity for you so we can hear and actually listen carefully because the idea is to have your feedback on this uh, online toolkit. Thank you. Dardan? Thank you, Anissa and Ivica, for very detailed presentation. Now, as you said, in this session, we would like to hear um, the feedback, comments, but also recommendations from our distinguished uh, academics not only from the Southeastern Europe, but also uh, other countries in Europe as we have here uh, present. So I would like to give now the floor to you. 
first, maybe uh, to suggest if you have any comments, for example, on the toolkit presented, but also more importantly, if you have any recommendation, uh, uh, what other information, for example, for you, it would be helpful for you to be engaged, but also with your staff in research uh, in this field. So you can ask questions uh, by raising the hand and then we will give the floor to you or you can make the question in, in written, whichever option that you prefer. Okay, so we have one uh, raised hand, I think. No. I think it's my hand, uh, there yes. is from yes. the panel. Yes. Maybe this is the reason why you can, you cannot see it. Uh, so uh, so uh, thank you very much. I want to thank uh, Anessa and Ivica for, for the presentation. Uh, really is an, an interesting tool, as you also said, that there's no so much information when it comes to illicit financial flows. And given our experience, there is also so much focus right now from the donor community, from the government on illicit financial flows. So we kind of like foresee that this is going to be a topic that is going to be long discussed, discussed uh, in our region. My question, in fact, is it's going to go to both Anessa and Ivica or maybe other experts as well. So you spoke, uh, Ivica, in fact, spoke about the list. So we have like, I mean, the, the gray list of ATAF and we have also the, the black list. So uh, from the Western Balkan region, uh, but also larger Balkan region, we have only Albania in the gray list. Uh, so we don't have other countries. Uh, so my question is like, I mean, uh, I believe I know the reasons why Albania is in that list, but uh, how this is going to be reflected in the, in the toolkit. So are we also going to, uh, to, to kind of like uh, monitor closely that, or is just going to be another country that is uh, that is going to also be presented with informations uh, like all the others. Um, so yeah, that was my question. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you yes, hear yes, me? Go yes, okay. yes, okay, thank you. Thank you, Fationa. It's an uh, it's it's, uh, excellent question. Yes, tomorrow uh, the Manila Committee will um, publish our our mutual evaluation report for North Macedonia, and, and we hope that they will not designate on the sanction list on the gray on the or maybe black list because uh, we following the assessment process uh, and the final uh, uh, ratings. I hope that will be uh, not be designated on this list. Yes, uh, Albania is currently only one country that uh, is designated by the FITF, and uh, I don't know what why is the reason for uh, this situation. Maybe your country or maybe Albania doesn't show the effectiveness and uh, compliance with the international standards of FITF and European Union. Um, um, the regulations that uh, uh, um, are regarding for money laundering and financing of terrorism. I'm. I don't know what uh, the Albania at the moment uh, undertake to be uh, to be the the, the listing from this uh, FITF uh, list, but. Uh, here is uh, with Albania Sokol. I, I think that he is a researcher from uh, Albania, and maybe he in his you he will provide what first why the Albania is designated on the FATF grave list, and what the Albania currently do for um, uh, for instance in national level how they um, adopt the national uh, legislation laws bylaws how they show the effectiveness in uh, combating money laundering and financing of terrorism. Because we as a state, they don't, uh, based on the previous uh, assessment, because they only uh, assess the compliance, but now with the new standard, they, they, should, they want to see effectiveness, how we actually implement these standards. And I think this is the one of the reason why uh, Albania uh, show uh, not effectiveness in the in this uh, um, uh, approach. 
And I think that one of the results was uh, waiting process of the judges and public prosecutors. And I think that on the next mutual evolution uh, process, your country will be uh, move on from the, this grey list. Uh, thank you, Ivica. So, like uh, my idea was also if this is going to be reflected also in the in the in the toolkit. So probably uh, you might. Uh, uh, my suggestion is to have also some special kind of like coverage uh, about that and kind of like measure as well also the initiatives that the country is taking in order to be removed from this list. So just uh, just to emphasize that since uh, it's the only country in the region that is in this position and. Yeah, as you said, hopefully in the next evaluation phase, that is going to be removed as well. Yes, uh, Serbia was uh, also the, um, listed on this grey list, but I think that they show uh, in the previous period, they show some effectiveness, uh, adopt some uh, laws and bylaws, and now they are removed from this um, uh, grey list. So maybe you should, uh, because responsible for this process is uh, director of financial intelligence unit, because uh, the national system of uh, Albania is similar like uh, Macedonian system and uh, uh, Serbian system. So um, the leader who are responsible for uh, this situation maybe is uh, financial intelligence unit because they are uh, they built uh, and they set up the national system for money laundering and financing of, financing of terrorism. And maybe they are um, they have the problem like. Uh, here in the same situation in the region because the other countries which are not um, uh, directly if, uh, work on the uh, preventing of money laundering and financing of terrorism they always force financial intelligence unit to be front uh, frontman in this process and to push other persons to push uh, other institutions to to work on the um, adopting law by law show effectiveness investigation confiscation uh, conviction, etc., etc. Thank you. Thank you, Ivica. If uh, Sokol wants to add anything on the issue of uh, Albania, before we go on with other uh, questions. Yes, yes. Uh, you, you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. Good afternoon. Yeah. Since this problem impacts just uh, Albania, as Albania, as we know, since. February 2021 has been listed as a gray in the gray list uh, by the FATF. Yes, this is true. And uh, maybe uh, on designing the toolkit, we should provide some extensive information in regard with that. But uh, however, up to now, uh, we have not been focused us as, as uh, consultants, I mean, we have not been focused on the on the structure of the toolkit itself, as you are presenting now graphically, but we, we have been focused on, on assessing the IFFs and also giving other information which will be required to complete the toolkit, uh, I mean the content of the toolkit. However, uh, this might be something to discuss and maybe to, to include in the toolkit itself uh, some more information in regard with that decision of uh, IFTF of February 21. So yes, uh, this might be a good input and uh, we will provide something on that, uh, uh, on that issue. Thank you, uh, Sokol. Uh, now I would like to give the floor to other uh, participants, uh, academics, to ask any question or provide their input on the toolkit presented. Dardan? Yes, uh, yes Professor. Yeah, only, only one statement, yes, only one statement. It's an estimation on the beginning. This toolkit we designed just to uh, raise awareness um, uh, among the other stakeholders, not only the uh, governmental institution, but also for academic um, journalists, um, NGO sector, because all of these are very really important in uh, creating national strategy for creation of, for reducing the illicit financial flow. Each of these uh, stakeholders play a really important role in uh, creating uh, the national system for prevention of monitoring, financial terrorism, and also for 
uh, strategy for reducing the illicit financial flow, especially academia, because they need to to design the new, for instance, subject uh, in the in the in the faculty to promote comb uh, prevention of money laundering and financing on terrorism to teach students how to um, uh, investigate money laundering, financing or terrorism, or maybe financial flows, and also uh, academia. Is very, you know, journalists are very important because they get some information from the field, they provide this information to the public prosecutor. Uh, if they can um, initiate maybe some investigation. Also, media are very important for promoting uh, videos or maybe some um projects uh, online or maybe on the media just to rise awareness among the, 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 the citizens thank you thank you Vita. and i would like to give the floor to professor marina thank you very much can you hear me yes we yeah. can hear you thank you uh, maybe it's answered on my question but uh, however I, I want to say a few words uh, we at Faculty of Security in Skopje uh, have a few subjects about this issue, financial crimes, uh, investigational uh, issue, etc. But uh, uh, maybe the question is uh, how academia can contribute on uh, this um, uh, area. Uh, for example, we can create some spe specific curricula uh, for this um, type of criminalistic investigation in the field of uh, uh, finance, etc. Uh, maybe the good practice will be to have uh, some cooperation with a uh, practitioner from MOA, for, for example, and some professor from Faculty of Security, and to create uh, some uh, some specific curricula for this issue, uh, and to uh, have opportunity uh, for uh, uh, inspectors and uh, uh, other participants in the law enforcement agency to uh, finish this course or this training uh, for improvement of their knowledge. So my uh, suggestion maybe is uh, in this uh, toolkit to, to have one specific uh, um, point, uh, for example, for education, education of a different uh, type of uh, uh, representative from law enforcement uh, agencies. Uh, this is the first uh, suggestion. And uh, something else uh, maybe can be um, training uh, also, not uh, academic uh, curricula, but some operational training, for example, in the frame of um, training center in uh, MOI. Uh, again, to have some a joint project with uh, um, our participants and colleagues from uh, MOI, uh, again, to create some specific training maybe. Uh, in our training center. Our training center um, uh, is uh, in one way a regional center and we can provide uh, this uh, training for um, uh, the participant from the region, for example. So maybe it will be a good uh, uh, idea for the next period of the, this project uh, to create uh, this kind of um, uh, curricula and together with uh, inspectors from MOI to have some training uh, for the officers uh, because, you know, um, uh, it's a good uh, to have um, knowledge, better knowledge uh, for uh, combating this type of crime. Thank you. Thank you, Professor, for the great uh, comments, but also uh, the recommendations. And uh, we have taken notes on this and uh, I will give the floor now to Anesa. She can provide uh, some question in, in your recommendations, but also the issues that you raised. Yes, Anissa. Um, uh, thank you, Marina, for your actually very fruitful response and suggestions and questions as well. As I accented before, the idea of this project is uh, to address not only the needs of the civil society, because we were often asked like what civil society can do about the IFFs actually. And this is what, uh, our contribution in sense of contributing to the strengthening the capacities, not only civil society, but also media. And here, when we wanted to contribute in this way, we wanted to also to uh, here from academia and included in addressing the needs of combating, uh, addressing the needs uh, and actually combating the IFFs. 
out of this, we can say, professional uh, structure. So in that sense, uh, we believe that actually including and linking with the academia is important, and especially in sense of uh, education and educating not only uh, future generations, but even now the cu current uh, students and uh, uh, researchers interested in this topic. So uh, in that sense, uh, this is actually our first step in linking here with the academia, hearing on your suggestions and listening to the needs of academia in that sense. Uh, so I believe that, as we said, uh, interest of the GEI, especially our observatory, is going beyond of this project and this current activities. So in the future, of course, we will take into consideration and plan and give focus uh, to the academia and education and actually equipping the researchers and the students in this topic. Uh, besides that, I also got the question in sense of uh, like, will we have certain in-person events on this uh, project? Uh, like not only demonstrating the use of this uh, online toolkit, but also speaking in person because we know how online uh, meetings are demanding and complex in that sense ra in raising uh, the interest of our target group. I have to say that uh, in previous period, uh, GI was uh, having events on in all Western Balkan countries, but also we had uh, last year in Athens uh, with the academia and researchers. So I believe that in the future uh, planning of the events, we will include, of course, this topic and engage uh, on importance of the, not only IFFs, but also the academia and the researchers and speaking up on this topic. And of course, the necessity, necessity of developing curricula on this level. Mm, so thank you. Thank you, Anessa. I see that uh, we have one raised hand from Miss uh, from Professor Slajana. So I will give the floor to her, and then it's Vehab, Professor Vehab. Thank you. Professor Slajana. Yes, I'm here. Uh, thank you. Thank you for providing this opportunity. Uh, I'm in a different time zone. It is very early in the morning here. But anyway, it is good to, to listen and to talk. Uh, when we are talking about the researching and providing the, the, the tools, how to collect data for the illicit financial flows, uh, I just wanted to remind the group that there is a, the regional roadmap for money laundering, which was developed in cooperation with the UNODC. And especially to the need that we will collect uh, big data related to the uh, financial flows, especially in the region of the Western Balkans. We have seen the initiative from the anti-corruption agencies to exchange the information on the asset declarations, because our officials, if we are talking about uh, uh, transferring money from the public funds through the region, uh, we can simply connect or push or see how the interest for uh, signing this agreement for sharing information on asset declarations is going on. This is something what civil society can do in each of the countries because these big data are very important for our assessment and research. And also the information about the procurement that is going through the region because we have seen cases of uh, procurement that is not regulated, but uh, it exists. And uh, also this information about uh, asset declaration, what they contain, uh, how they are uh, submitted, uh, is not really known to the um, investigators. They investigate, uh, they, and normally they leave the investi financial investigation to the financial specialist, but it is good to provide this type of training for them as well about the assets declaration, what they contain, how they can be verified. Albania has a very good experience in validating asset declaration, which can be shared with the others in the region and uh, also to provide more training about the public procurement 
and phases in the public procurement where the flows, the initial financial flows can be uh, initiated. So this is just uh, maybe also for Ibiza to add something to the uh, to the tool, which other information can be uh, collected, because we already we already have activities going on around this, and maybe it is good to merge uh, and to check what the others are doing, and some of us are also sitting in the two or in more than one initiative, so we can simply exchange and to. Um, encourage the academia. Uh, 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 it is very often in other countries that there are good uh, laboratories uh, composed with few people from different expertise working with the students to understand these issues. But we don't have that in our region. In our faculties, it does not exist. The academia is not really talking to the uh, professionals to the practitioners to bring them into the faculties and to talk to the to the students or to help them with the essays and uh, their master works so that was my what i wanted to say thank you thank you professor slajana uh, anisa ivica do you want to to add anything um, yes. Ivica, if you have something to add, go ahead. Uh, obviously, I don't have generally because I, I listen carefully the um, the both professors and uh, uh, Professor Talsevay, Professor Marish. So they, uh, I'm familiar with um, this roadmap for illicit financial flow and combating corruption and money laundering in the region. It's designed by the UNODC actually, and um, I I'm familiar with the this uh, this roadmap and with the activities uh, what the countries need to undertake in uh, preventing and um, combating illicit financial flows. So um, maybe maybe during the uh, uh, in our academia part and uh, maybe academia should maybe work together not only with the MOI but together with the all uh, investigators because I think that. Uh, we have a problem, especially here in Macedonia, because they don't have any, um, not knowledge about how to conduct their financial investigation um, related to illicit financial flows, because most of the investigation are criminal investigation focused on the predicative offense, but not only for following the, the flows of the money. And this is the one of the big issue for uh, all countries in the region, not for the, only for Macedonia. Uh, we can work together to design, the, as the Professor Marish said, um, curricula just to to help these investigators to recognize this issue and to, to recognize this need because uh, leading financial investigation is very important because if you not confiscate and if you not freeze the assets on the beginning, then we will spend a lot of time uh, uh, for uh, providing criminal investigation, but with uh, not. Uh, much more effective by the states. Thank you, Ivica. Now I would like to give... Just, just, uh, just yeah. to... to uh, sorry, that, um, I forgot to, to mention that uh, Academia also is... Um, uh, now we work together. Um, maybe uh, Professor Malish um, doesn't uh, know, but we work uh, and we engage in the previous period uh, some professors from the Faculty of uh, Security uh, for uh, risk assessment process of uh, money laundering and financing of terrorism. And now we are uh, in the process of um, uh, revision of the national risk assessment process. And I hope that the Council for Combating Money Laundering and Financing of Terrorism will invite also a couple of professors from Faculty of Security just to help us, not only in the assessment process, but also in the drafting uh, the report. Thank you, Ivica. Now I'll give the floor to Professor Vehap and sorry for uh, keeping you waiting. Professor, the floor is yours. Professor, we do not hear you. All 
right? Do we have other questions from academics present? Yes, Professor Nirma. Claudio, can you? All right. Good. Can you unmute Professor Nirma? Okay. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Good, good yes, day, perfect. everyone. Uh, well, uh, I am Nerma Halilovic Kibric, and I am assistant professor at the University of Sarajevo, Faculty of Criminal Justice and Security Studies. And I don't have any questions, but I I, I want to to do and and have some comments, of course. Uh, while because illicit uh, financial flows uh, may not be the main focus of my academic pursuits, uh, I, I acknowledge the significance of recognizing the potential impact of any issue that poses a security threat to my country and the other country from uh, the Western Western Balkans region. Uh, so I greatly appreciated the idea to, uh, of developing uh, a tool toolkit. Uh, I firmly believe that such a toolkit would be immediately beneficial for students who are interested uh, in uh, conducting research in the, that specific, specific area. Uh, uh, it would uh, provide them with the valuable guardians and resources to um, uh, somehow uh, uh, raise their understanding and enable them to contribute meaningful uh, to the study of illicit financial flows. So thank you, Anessa, and thank you, Ivisa, uh, for everything you do in that area. Uh, and I, I would be uh, very happy to, to um, uh, how to say that, to inform my students about uh, everything you do. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Nerma. Uh, do we have any other comments or interventions? No. Okay. Now we'll give the floor to to Anesa for the final remarks. Anesa, the floor is yours. Uh, Dardan, thank you. Again, I will have opportunity to thank you for your time and especially your attention. And we value your feedback and, of course, uh, especially taking into consideration that for some today is a non-working day. So thank you especially for joining us. Uh, I will kindly of ask you on behalf of my team that if you have any idea or maybe across your mind later on when you think of our project and the toolkit, please do write us uh, any feedback or comments at a later stage. And of course, if you have the need maybe to talk to the coordinators or to us about the project, please do write us. Uh, Almedina will share the email where you can write. Uh, and Today, I hope that you we have uh, presented to you very clearly on what we are doing and how we are doing. So we will be there for your comments and of course, for any additional uh, updating information. So thank you again, and hope that we will be seeing you soon in during our, our events or even after on launching today uh, the toolkit. Thank you. Thank you, have a great day.